Federation of the Literary Arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Boris Kischek. Now, Boris is a Saskatchewan author with four books, three of which are centered in Saskatchewan. But today, we're going to talk about his latest book, Possessions. Boris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So we'll just start a little bit farther back, and, and I'd like to know a little bit about what led you to writing, to begin to write in, in the manner that you put these books together. Well, um, my, I'm an engineer by profession, and over the years I've uh, done a lot of research and a lot of reports and so on, and uh, I decided to continue on, and the books I've written actually reflect my life uh, as it uh, evolved. And so research is, is big in the, these subjects, are subjects that you really have to know a lot about in order to put them on the page. So what, what does the day look like when you're researching? What do you, how do you put Well, it's, it's off and on, but probably uh, each of my books probably took me two to three years each uh, over the time. Not full time, but uh, you get an idea and then you research it and go to the library and, uh, and talk to people and so on. And the other books have very, they're, they're more specific in their, in their subject material. We have, um, we have Connecting with Ukraine and uh, Long-Term Care in Saskatchewan, Crown Corporations in Saskatchewan. Right. So those are, those are full volumes on a, on a single subject. Right. But your latest book, you've, you've really got more of a broad subject matter that you're looking at. Yeah, as I tell myself, it's more reflective, I think, of, of life and, uh, and life experiences and... Uh, how we live, and uh, and so on. Yeah. And Possessions has a, it's a, a subtitle, so right. can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, Possessions deals with how um, it may affect things like anger, envy, envy jealousy, uh, conflicts, and so on. But my, I originally thought it, started thinking about it because for some reason throughout my life, I often wondered why people kill each other, kind of a uh, uh, you know, a fairly substantial thing to to think about, but it, it, it seemed so. And then when I started putting it together, I just I thought, well, anger, jealousy, envy, uh, conflict, all have this common thread, and that seems to be possessions. Mm -hmm. And so do you find that if, uh, if someone has more, there's more of a... Uh, how, do, how does that play? Like if someone has a lot of possessions, are they more likely to react in a certain way than someone with less? Or, is, or does it really depend on no, what people it, want? Not, yeah, not necessarily. Uh, for example, and I think one is um, jealousy, is, uh, is basically when people become jealous when they lose something, mm -hmm. a possession. And it's... Uh, sometimes reflected in, in marital situations where there's conflict between uh, spouses and so on. There's usually a, a, a jealousy and a possessions element into that. Uh, same with envy. Um, i give you an example of uh, Curtis Dagenet, you may have heard a number of years ago, uh, killed two Mounties in northern Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. That all started from a conflict within the family over ownership of a house. And so there's an envy animal, an envy element in that. So mm -hmm. that seems to be how it progresses. And so you've not only looked at, at examples in Saskatchewan, but you've looked at, at people that we know from around the world as well in this in this volume. Exactly. And the other side of the coin is there are a lot of people, many people have done great accomplish, accomplishments without possessions. Uh, Marie Curie, for example, uh, Louis Pasteur, um, and, and I guess my favorite is uh, Robert Burns. Uh, Robert Burns is a poet in the 1700s in Scotland. He's the son of a tenant farmer. He had died when he was only 27 years old. He had very few possessions. But we all celebrate Robert Burns Day once a year across Canada. Everybody knows who bought Robert Burns Day. So he didn't have any possessions as such, but he had the possession of being able to uh, speak to what situation was in this country at this time. And he wrote so much. He exactly. Really, and we sing Auld Lang Syne every year. Yeah. Uh, and so when you think about uh, other examples that fall into um, the, sub the subheadings of, of the book. Uh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. One is greed, for example. And a good example is these Ponzi schemes. You, you're familiar with them? So uh, there's a... Tell a bit of Jones in, in Montreal, Earl Jones. 
um, set up a Ponzi scheme. He got money from his friends, his family, uh, and his brother, in fact. And, and he used to, for example, talk people into selling their houses so they could get some cash to invest in his company. Well, he ruined a lot of people's lives by doing so. Uh, so that's an example of how greed uh, enters into it. Yeah. And so um, what, was, what was something that really surprised you when you were doing the research for this? Were, were, there, were there things that you just hadn't thought of before when you were researching for this book? Uh, well, as I went along and I picked up, you know, I, I, this all didn't come to me at once, like mm -hmm. envy, jealousy, and, and greed, and so on. I, I just kept going. And as I, as I kept going, I, I, I thought this the theme, this common theme of possessions, seemed to affect them all. And so are you working on another book now? Well, I'm thinking about another yeah. book, yeah. Do you, do you always have ideas in your head that you're thinking, oh, that would be a, a good article or a good book to, to pull together? Yeah, it seems that it, it, it comes, progresses that way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And can you tell people a little bit about where they, where they can find your books? Well, there's in all the bookstores in Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. uh, Chapters and uh, Indigo, Coles and McNally and so on, yeah. And and what do what do people tell you when they when they've been reading your book? What what kind of responses do you get from your readers? You know, I don't get very much, <laughs> very much responses. Um, I think it takes a while to read the book, mm -hmm. it, as it, you know, and uh, it's not something that I think people pick up and do in a day or two days. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, what's what's your favorite thing about writing? What do you what do you like about? I don't know. I just I guess keeps me busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you've published, you've published with Unicklesworth Press and with Driverworks. Yes. And so those are two good, strong, solid yes, Saskatchewan. Yes, I found them very uh, good to work with. And uh, they're certainly, you know, uh, supportive of, of Saskatchewan uh, uh, writers and so on, yeah. And so do you have any advice for, for people who, are, who have one of these ideas that they keep thinking about and they keep digging a little bit deeper into the research? Do you have any, any advice for someone who, who has an idea that they'd like to put that to paper? Well, I think in, in my case, uh, I just wanted to tell that story, um, especially, so for example, long-term care, uh, nursing homes and so on. People don't really think about nursing homes until they need it or someone in their family needs it. Uh, so it's, it's a tremendous service that's being provided. We all maybe have to have it someday. And uh, so that's one motivation I had was to tell a story because... People working in, in special care homes, for example, are very hardworking. They look after their patients, and so um, you know, a story deserves to be told. Well, and, then, and that's a good way to end it. Stories that deserve to be told, and and that's all the stories we have time okay. for today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Boris, for being on the show with us. My pleasure. This is Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to Shaw TV Saskatoon on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you'd like to get a hold of me, if you have an idea for a, for a show segment, you can get a hold of me at danikalore at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.